Brakes may well be a vital component on a bike as far as safety is concerned, but there's so much more to them than simply being able to stop a bike. Now, modern mountain bike brakes are immensely powerful, and you can set them up in a variety of different ways to suit your riding style, the terrain you're riding on, and of course, all the other stuff that goes with them. Now, Magura have just launched their new customization program, which means they're the perfect brand to work with for this video to demonstrate all the different things that you need to take into account when putting brakes on your bike, how you put them onto your bike, and of course, all that custom stuff that really makes them different. Ever since mountain biking got technical, Magura has been involved. In fact, 30 years ago, they made the first hydraulic rim brake, and popularity grew immensely from the beginning. It didn't take long until you saw those little neon yellow calipers and brake levers popping up everywhere. Fast forward to 2019, and the brakes are once more in the limelight. Loic Bruni, of course, used their brakes at the first round of the World Cup to take victory. And Danny McCaskill, the world's most famous precision rider, he trusts Magura brakes for his mind-boggling stunts. And so many of the XCO riders are relying on Magura brakes for their lightweight and immense power. Something that all of those riders have in common is the fact that they have completely different setups. And in fact, it's actually Danny McCaskill and Loic Bruni that we have to thank for this custom program because they're the ones that identified the fact that they wanted to have custom setups from what was available on the market. Now, no matter what brand of brakes you're putting onto your bike, you have a lot of setup options. There's different powered brakes, there's twin pot designs, there's four pot designs, there's different rotor sizes, brake pad compounds. There are lots of ways to set your brakes up to get the most from. So let's take a look at the most fundamental things first. Now, levers first. Now, when you wrap your hands around a brake lever and you engage your finger on it, the way it feels can really make a difference between wanting to use that brake and perhaps wanting to use another one. Now, typically, for example, Shimano brakes have quite stout, short levers. SRAM brakes tend to be a little bit straighter and longer. Now, some people have a preference to either of those, but when you have those brakes, that's what you have. Nothing wrong with that, it's just a feature. Now, Magura brakes, again, they have a certain lever feature depending on the model you pick, but you do have that custom ability to change the lever design, enabling you to actually get the specifics down of what you want from your brake. Now, typically, Brakes orientated towards downhill will be mostly made of aluminium. They'll have a slightly heavier duty build, whereas those more biased to cross country or lighter duty trail riding could have a carbon lever blade like these and will have a generally a lighter construction to them. Of course, lightweight is a fantastic thing to have, but if you're a sort of rider that crashes quite a lot, they might not be the right ones for you. Down at the caliper end is the pistons that do all the action. So the pistons are responsible for pushing the brake pads in and essentially closing around that disc rotor, which slows you down. Now, some brakes will have a two piston design like this, which are ideal for weight saving and lighter duties. Whereas other brakes like this one here has a four piston design, also known as a four pot design. Now these have a lot more power to them, but they're also a lot heavier and they also help aid heat dissipation. However, you don't always want this amount of power. It's a fine tuning duty between picking which one suits what you want to do. If you were to have a big four piston brake on a cross country bike, for example, you're going to be accidentally locking up your wheels all the time. And if you're locking up your wheels, they're skidding, you're not in control. So for a cross country bike, a regular two pot brake is a much better idea. Now something Magura offer off the shelf is what they call a trail combination, which essentially you get one of each. You get the four pot, for your front wheel and you get the two pot for your rear wheel. Now, when you're braking, you think you load up the front wheel of the bike. So that's where your weight bias is. That's what attraction is. So accordingly, you do most of the stopping with the four pot brake and the wheel essentially has less weight on it out back. You have the single. Now you can achieve the same thing if you're to buy other brand brakes as single items, but I think it's a really smart move to have this included in the range. You can have a four pot, you can have a regular two pot, or you can have that mix so it really is another part of the customization process. Now, disc rotors are up next and there's various different options on the market, ranging from the more XC biased 160 mil style rotors, the trail friendly 180s and the big downhill ones, 200 mil plus. Now, the bigger the disc is, the better it's gonna dissipate heat because it's a much bigger surface, but it's also gonna be a lot heavier. Now, opposite applies, of course, with the smaller disc, it's gonna get hot quicker but it's much lighter, so it is very suitable for certain applications. You just have to pick what really suits your bike. 
Now you don't have to have the same size rotors front and rear. As I explained with the pistons of a brake, it's quite good to have slightly more power on your front wheel. So if, for example, you were gonna have, say, single pot brakes front and rear, it's a good idea to perhaps have a 160 and a 180 rotor or a 180 and a 200 just to increase your power slightly without having a different brake. The point is, it's another customizable part of your brake, so don't just take them for granted. Now choosing the right brake pads for the conditions you ride in and the way you want to ride is also A, a very good idea to make sure you get right and B, another way of customizing how you want your bike to feel. Now typically there are three main types of pads on the market. You get the sintered metal type, you get the organic or resin type and you get the sort of the combination of both like semi-metallics for example. Now metallic pads or sintered metallic pads are the most powerful brakes. They deal with heat the best but as a downside they have to be run at slight high temperatures to get the most out of them and they can be quite loud. Now the resin and organic pads have more initial bite, they're much better for general riders, they run a lot quieter but they're not as good in wet and they do wear out slightly faster. And the semi-metallics, you guessed it, there's an element of both in there. Magura's offerings again apply to the same rule of thumb there, they've got three different types of pads, they've got the comfort ones, they've got the performance ones and they've got the race ones. Now the difference with these pads is fairly similar, likeable to the sintered organic resin and semi offerings out there on the market. So we've looked at all the details of the brake, the two piston design, the four piston design, the big, the small rotors, the different pad compounds. These are all ways that you can customise your own brakes, whatever brand you're working with. But now we've identified that, let's look at the setup tips and this is the stuff where you can really customise how well your brakes work for you. Now the first one is a really simple one, thread lock. Now this is vital with brakes, especially when you're looking at disc rotor bolts. So your bike might have six disc rotor bolts, that's the traditional method, or it might have center lock. Now it's a really good idea to use some medium strength thread lock on those bolts. The reason for that is there's a lot of power and there's a lot of vibration that goes through brakes. Shouldn't need to spell it out really, should we? It's a safety related product. So do yourself a favor, get yourself some good quality thread lock and make sure your disc rotor bolts have got that. Whilst you're at it, do your disc caliper bolts as well. That's where the, the actual brakes bolt to your frame, to the brake mounts that are on there or to your fork. And whilst you're at it, it's a good idea to check the bolts are up to torque. Now, it's not essential to have a torque wrench of any kind. It's a very good idea to have one. You can, of course, just use your common sense but just take care. The next setup point is all cockpit related. So this is your lever position. Now this is absolutely vital to get the most out of your brakes. Now anyone can do this, but if you've got an old set of brakes that are already on your bike, or you've got a brand new set of brakes and you're setting them up, get this right and your brakes are gonna feel really good. Now there's a few adjustments you can make. There's the angle of your brake levers and then there's the in and out. Now firstly, we'll look at the angle. Now the general rule of thumb is when you have your saddle at full effective riding height, your brake levers should in theory follow the line of your forearm. That's the best place to start. If your brake levers are too far down, they might feel really nice when you're in the saddle, but the downside is when you're off the back of the bike descending on steep terrain, you're putting your wrists at a slightly weaker angle, so you're straining your wrist, so that's not a good thing. So you really wanna help yourself here. However, by having your brake levers at that angle quite down, what that does mean is they're gonna feel really good when you're sprinting out the saddle. So if you're an XC biased rider, you might serve you more to have your brakes a little steeper down and sacrifice the overall descending performance, but that is up to you. The general rule of thumb is to start with them following your forearm. Another option to you if you're a gravity biased rider, and what I mean by that is someone who likes bike parks or descending, all the fun stuff like that, Having your brakes slightly higher is better because you're gonna be spending more time off the back of the bike. You might wanna focus that straight line with your arms when you're on that descending position hanging off the back of the bike. It's a stronger position for your wrist to be in and you're gonna have less strain going through to your hands. Now some downhill races have the brakes almost horizontal to compensate for that off the back of the bike when they're really railing it around turns and steep terrain. Now of course these are set up guidelines and this is where you form your base setup, but there is a comfort factor that you're not gonna find out until you have some decent saddle time. And what I mean by this is numbness in your hand. Now you will never know this without doing a, like a seriously big ride. And there's two main types you can get. 
you get carpal tunnel syndrome, and you can also get the ulnar nerve pain. Now the ulnar nerve runs up the outside of your arm, from the outside of your hand, the heel of your hand here, and it affects your smaller fingers, and of course affects your forearm and your elbow as well, but you can get numbness in this part of your hand. Now, carpal tunnel one affects your index finger, your middle finger, and your thumb, and it basically runs up the center of your hand and up the inside of your wrist here. Now, if you get any of that sort of numbness, you're gonna to have to experiment with different handlebar grips, different bar roll positions, and of course, through control positions, because this is something that takes time to figure out. If you're gonna be spending a long time on your bike, make sure you take the time to dial those things in. Next up is deciding where you want your brake lever position to be when you're actually holding the handlebar grip, so your brakes in and out as such. Now, this will depend on how long your brake levers are, and if you wanna use one finger or two finger braking, maybe more than that. Now, if you're using one finger braking, you really want your finger to be the nearest to the end of the brake lever as possible to get the maximum amount of leverage. These days, brakes are pretty powerful on the most part. Even the weaker brakes are still more than adequate to come to a decent standstill just using a single digit. Magura and many other brake manufacturers offer one finger levers, but like I say, you can also use two fingers or three fingers. Now, when you're positioning the lever in and out, you have to take into account how much lever travel there is. Now, this is the next preference we're gonna to get to. Now, for example, if you like the feeling of using one finger on the brakes, but you wanna use it in this position on the lever, you have to take into account that the lever travel could make the end of the brake lever foul on your other fingers. Now, if this happens, this could stop you coming to a standstill, and of course, it could be painful as well. So these are all things to take into account. Another thing to take into account is where you're gonna mount your shifters, whether you've got a front shifter, a rear shifter, maybe you've got lockouts, maybe you've got a dropper post. You need to take into account how you use these things and whether you're stood or you're seated when you do so. So for a dropper post for me, I like the lever to be further away because typically I'll be getting out the saddle as I start using this thing. So I want it to feel natural as I make that transition. So I'll slam it, I'll jump out the saddle, and again, it's in the right position when I want it to pop back up again. Now with the shifters, I actually like to swing my shifters quite far around, and I don't tend to use the direct mounts that you can get for Magura, SRAM, and Shimano brakes. The direct mount, however, does look much neater on the bars, and of course, there's one less thing on there. Something additionally to take into account is when you are angling these things, make sure they're in a position where something bad's not gonna happen, like your shorts hooking on your shifter when you're sprinting. Now your lever reach adjustment is also another vital thing to get right to get the most from your brakes and also the most mechanical advantage from your hands. So this bone here, known as the third phalanx of your finger, actually is the optimum place to have your brake lever rest and to use if you're using single finger braking. Now some people would like to naturally rest towards this joint and others, myself included, will naturally rest towards here, which gives you that slightly more mechanical feeling from your brakes. Now again, this is a preference thing. I know some people that want their brakes to barely move when they touch them and others want them to travel nearly all the way to the bars and all they've got to do is just naturally squeeze them a bit. That is entirely up to you. There's no right or wrong, but just think the further away from your bars your brake lever is, the harder your hand has to work in order to stop. In addition to reach adjust, some brakes also offer a bite point adjustment. So that is nothing to do with the actual distance where your brake lever is from the bars is effectively the pad travel. So this can be different on varying brakes, but accordingly, it means how much the lever travels before the pads operate on the rotor. But again, that's one of the more advanced features you don't see on all brakes. Now, one final thing to bear in mind is how tight you have your brake levers on the bars themselves. Now, some levers like these are made with a bit of a carbon construction, they're lighter weight, so you don't want to over tighten them because you could risk damaging them. The same applies to handlebars. And one other factor to bear in mind is if your brakes are like vice-like on the bars, when you have that big crash that's inevitable at some point when you're riding, you could well snap your brake levers clean off the bars. If they're loose enough to move under hard impact, there's much less chance of that happening. But of course, you must make sure that it can't move up and down under normal operation because common sense dictates that is not a safe way to have your brakes set up. Now, once you have all the basics set up, you're in a position you can do the final customization to really tailor your brakes to make sure they're your own. 
Now the first port of call for that is of course tidying up all your cockpit area, making sure your hoses are as short as they need to be. You don't want them to be additionally long hanging out everywhere. A, they can snag on stuff, B, they look horrible, and C, they can be really noisy as well. So make sure they're trimmed down to the relevant lengths that suit your bike. Something else we like to recommend is using shrink fit around the hoses or cable ties because hoses can actually bash around on top of each other making unnecessary noise. Of course, that is just a little personal preference of my own. I like my bikes to be as quiet as possible, but it might not bother you. And just to top off on top of all of this stuff, this is where the Magura customization program really comes in. So you've got your brake set up, you've got everything dialed in, but perhaps you don't quite like the way your brake levers feel the way your friends do. So Magura offer four aftermarket brake lever blades. So you can actually tailor the feel of your brakes. Now this is really cool and something that Loic Bruni and Danny McCaskill actually really sort of brought to the program when they signed up as sponsored riders with Magura. They didn't just want to use their product, they wanted it to feel the way they wanted it to. Now Danny likes a one finger brake and his particular levers, you can actually dial in the amount of leverage that they offer on the brakes. So you can increase the braking power on that one finger lever. Now that's something I think I might try out myself. That really appeals to me. I'm not that fussed about carbon levers. Technically they're stiffer, they feel a bit nicer in cold weather, but I actually quite like those little one finger levers. Now you can choose between one finger levers, you can choose between two finger levers. Now what Loic wanted was actually a longer lever for more leverage, he's got bigger hands. He wanted that just straight feel that he can run his brakes quite far in board and just hang off the ends of those levers for maximum purchase. Now, of course, that's not what I like at all, but this is the beauty of a customization program is you can do it exactly the way you want to. I think this is really cool. So there we go. That is how you get the most from your brakes. Now, if you want to see how Danny McCaskill runs his brakes on his one-off trans bike, click up there for that video. And if you like what Magura are doing with their customization program, give us a huge thumbs up and don't forget to share and subscribe.